All right, so today, relatively quickly, we're gonna cover cloth simulation, uh, both as, as far as animating like a flag blowing in the wind or a banner, uh, but also cloth interacting with other objects. So I've got a basic scene, and I've got a flag here set up that I'm gonna um, come back to, but I just wanna cover the, the like super basics of how to just get some cloth being simulated. So here is a plane, just a default plane I added, and I'll add a, uh, well, I won't add the, the sphere yet. We'll just talk about the plane. So if you want to add a cloth simulation, you select what you want to be cloth. And I'm going to change from modeling menu set to the effects menu set. And we've got a menu called end cloth and create end cloth. That's what we're going to select. All right, we can open up the attribute editor, and we've got a few different things here. Um, we select the cloth. We've got end cloth shape. We have a bunch of collision options and dynamics properties, a ton of different properties. You can play around with them on your own. You can refer to the Maya help um, for reference if you want to know exactly what each individual slider does. Uh, but there's also a bunch of presets. So on, in the end cloth shape tab, presets, and now we have a bunch of different materials that we can simulate. I would say, you know, spend some time in here, experiment. Uh, it's it's a pretty fun thing to to play around with. But for this, I think we'll just start with a basic T-shirt material. We're all familiar with how T-shirts, how that cloth moves. Uh, once you have that, you can see there's a little bit of, de of description. A cotton t-shirt is medium weight and friction, uh, and is slightly stretchy with relatively damped motion. So it's talking about the characteristics of the cloth and how it behaves in the simulation. So once we have that, uh, the simulation is there. We can just hit play. And what's going to happen is it's just going to fall through the world uh, forever. And the reason it's going to do that is, one, gravity is on by default. And two, there's nothing else in the scene for it to interact with. So what I'm going to do is go back to the first frame. And now I will add a sphere. And I'm going to uh, move it up one unit just so it's sitting on the grid floor. OK. Now let's hit play and see what happens. Nothing still. And this is to be expected. Um, the reason this is happening is because Maya doesn't know, and the cloth doesn't know, that this sphere is something that it's supposed to pay attention to. Um, by default, not everything in the scene is what's called a collider. So you have to tell it what you want to be a colliding object. So I'm going to select the sphere. And again, in the end cloth menu, we have this first option, create a passive collider. And um, for the options, we just have choose the solver. So nucleus one is what was created when we made the end cloth simulation. You can see in my outliner, that's all that's there. So right now, it doesn't matter. But if you want something to maybe only collide with one simulation and not the other. This is where you can choose which simulation that you want it to be considered for. So I'm going to click Make Collide. OK, now that's a collider object. Uh, there are some attributes there that we can uh, adjust. But now we can go back to frame one. Here's our cloth. Let's hit Play. And there we go. Now, not a whole lot happens. OK, there's. Um, it falls and then that's kind of it. There's not a whole lot of life to this. Cloth simulations work better when you have more divisions. So I'm going to select my, my cloth object. I'm also going um, to make it a little bit larger, a little bit off center. And then I'm also going to uh, smooth it. So right up here in the polygon modeling tool shelf is the smooth command. And that's just going to add more divisions. And now we can add more divisions and see what that looks like. OK. So you can see it falls. It deforms to the shape of the sphere and then kind of slides off Okay, because there's not a whole lot of friction there. Uh, we can also add another ground plane scale it up and make that a collider as well. So now when the cloth falls off, 
which let's give that a color just so that we have a we have some contrast in the scene. I'll just make it blue. That's it. That'll work. Okay. Just so that it's something different. Now it'll fall, slide off, and then crumple into a pile on the floor. Right, and this will also give you a, a good example of the different presets. So uh, let's choose you know, silk. Okay, it's going to fall a little bit slower. It's a little bit wispier. It slides a little bit more. We can do solid rubber. Oops. Replace. Okay, that's going to bounce a lot. It's a very stiff fabric there. Um, we could do... I don't know. I've not tried water balloon before. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, that... That feels like stretch rubber that kind of shrinks on itself, and that's kind of a cool effect. Okay, so those are the presets you have. Again, you can make all the changes individually. Refer to the, the um, Maya help for, for more information there. Um, so there's the basics. Now let's take it a step further, and let's make a flag. So I'm going to select all of this. I'll just put it on its own layer and hide it. I'll save the project real quick. And now here is, whoops, did that not go on its own layer? Add selected objects, there we go, okay. Let's put that on that layer as well. Okay. So here is the flag, similar sort of situation. Uh, so I'm going to go up to end cloth, create end cloth. And right now it doesn't have anything. It's going to go back to one and then it's going to start falling. Interesting. That uh, that sphere is still there in my scene, so I'm gonna. Well, I mean, I guess it's fine, uh, but we'll delete it. We don't need it. Okay. So here's the cloth. It's just gonna fall into oblivion. So in this case, we don't want it to fall at all. We want it to stay where it is. Well, flags generally they're attached on one side. And then the rest just is kind of free to blow in the wind. So let's cover both of those things. Let's start with the attaching part. The way that this works um, is you can actually tell certain parts of a mesh not to move. Uh, so what I'm going to do is going to go to vertex mode. And I'm going to grab like the top, mm, let's try maybe four vertices and the bottom four. And then I'm going to go up to end constraint and transform constraint. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell the cloth simulation that these eight vertices that I have selected are not going to move. They are locked in place. So now when I hit play, you can see what happens. Now, we're getting a whole lot of stretch here on this simulation, so we need to make some adjustments there. But you can see those vertices do not move at all. So we're in the right direction. Let's do a, uh, oops, select the flag, presets. We'll go again with just t-shirt. See how that does. Okay, you can see that's not stretching nearly as much now. Uh, also, the simulation ends too soon, so let's, we'll go to a thousand frames. There we go. Oops, I don't want to play backwards, I just want to play. There we go. All right, so now it'll go. It'll kind of collapse in on itself. You'll see it kind of bouncing off of itself um, as it as gravity kind of takes control, right? And then it'll just kind of hang there. But that's just a non-windy day, and that's not really what flags are all about. So if we want the flag to start blowing in the wind, we need to give it wind. By default, there is some wind or there's a, a wind system, we just need to turn it on. So we want to select the nucleus here, which is that little N with the arrow. You can also select it in the outliner. All right, nucleus one. Uh, you can also select the cloth, and I think it might be in... No, it's not, never mind. Okay, so nucleus one, and we've got some transform attributes, but we also have gravity and wind. So we can adjust the gravity if we want. Uh, 
negative 9.8 meters per second squared is the acceleration of gravity in the real world, and that is what Maya is replicating here. It's got 9.8 and moving in the negative y direction, which is down. Uh, but the next four sliders here are about air. We have air density, wind speed, wind direction, and wind noise. I'm going to leave density alone. We'll just focus on speed, direction, and noise. So speed is probably a pretty intuitive slider. Let's bring that up to 15 and hit play. We'll see that wind is already having an effect. Okay, and now we're getting these really nice kind of natural ripples there. We have wind direction, which is the direction the wind is blowing. Right now it's moving in uh, the x direction, but we can also maybe we add a little bit of, let's go negative 0.3 in the z direction, and it'll start blowing towards us a little bit. Or, yeah. We, or actually, no, away from us a little bit. There we go. Okay, so you can see it blowing in that direction. Um, we can also add wind noise. So what, what can happen is wind noise is like variation in the velocity of wind. If you don't have any variation, the animation here can start to feel very generated because it's just, it's a repeating pattern, right? So we want to vary up that pattern so it doesn't look like it's a simulation. So we're going to increase the wind noise and then we'll go back to frame one. We have to start the first simulation from frame one. We can't just start a new simulation halfway through. Uh, and now it should be a little bit more varied here. Okay, it's going to start feeling like there's gusts in the wind. Okay, and so that is, that's how you do a flag blowing in the wind. I probably have the wind speed up a little too high. You can bring that down to like six. You know, you can get, get different feels if you just want a slightly breezy day or, or not. Um, you can also, the type of material that you're using, like silk is going to blow a lot easier in the wind. Rubber isn't going to deform nearly as much. All sorts of stuff there. Um, the last thing that I want to show is with um, just kind of setting the simulation up and getting something that feels a little bit more natural, is I'm going to change the starting shape. So let's go here to layer two. Okay, so this is the same mesh as the flag, it's just turned on its side. And before I tell this to be an end cloth, I'm going to select some edges here. Oops, not. I want to select some vertical edges. So let's grab maybe this one, that one, just kind of at random, and that one. I'm going to open up my move tool settings, turn on soft selection. And we'll turn that strength down quite a ways. Let's try 0 0.03, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We'll go 0.25. There we go. All right, I'm just going to move them back a little bit. Okay, so I'm just giving some some variation. Uh, to the starting mesh. I can turn off soft select now. All right, so it's like a, a banner or, or you know draped curtains hanging on the wall. And then from there, I'm going to select, maybe I'll select the top two rows of vertices. Well, actually, before I do that, we'll give it, we'll make it a, a simulation. Then I'll select the top two rows of vertices, end constraint, transform constraint. So those aren't going to move. And then I'll go to my attribute editor, select my nucleus. Or actually, I'm using the same nucle nucleus, excuse me. So I don't have to worry about the wind. And I can just hit play. And OK, there's one other thing I need to do. And let's give it a preset. So let's go with uh, I think we'll go with heavy denim. We'll see what that looks like. It's going to be kind of slow at first. Okay, so you can kind of see that this is more of a passive 
breeze than you know a flag blowing in the wind. But a couple of different things that you can do with with uh, cloth simulation pretty quickly, um, pretty minimal effort. Any questions? Yeah. So if yeah. I wanna like I wanna put blankets on my bed, but I just basically do the same thing you did for the curtain. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know exactly what you're saying. I just kind of wanted to be like, yep. Hey, it's yep. Let it do its thing. I didn't need to start it that high off, off the ground either. Still not giving me what I want. So you basically just want it to like crunch up mm -hmm. and then just take the final. Yep. Yeah. So like if you, let's say you didn't have it crunched up, where would you go from? Uh, so once you have it crunched up, uh, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to do this real quick. Um, <laughs> So once you have it all crunched up, there is, I gotta remember, I think you, I think you can just duplicate the shape, oh. like select it and duplicate it, and that new thing is gonna be its own. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I just want, it does not, uh, I'm gonna change the, let's go to silk. bring it so it's not intersecting the floor at the beginning. This is where you can give it either something to, to interact with, maybe it starts to fall off the corner of a bed, um, and, and also give it more kind of starting folds would probably help. You can see it's it's kind of starting to do that. Yeah, you, know, you can see also a thousand frames is probably not going to be enough for the simulation, but we'll just take whatever a thousand gives us. Come on, stop. Oh, you're killing me. Just reset Thanks. itself. I can only render it from my software, though. I can't do it in our Okay. I'm 95% sure you just duplicate it, but I just want to get something okay. relatively interesting to duplicate. Just have to make sure I stop the simulation before it gets to the end. I had a couple of students do this last semester for the advanced class to like a blanket on a bed, um, oh, yeah. you know, the exact exact same use case. So, so. Yeah, I was waiting <coughs> for this because I didn't, I didn't want to like try to make my own blanket. So I, was I have hand modeled wrinkles in fabric before. It's not fun. It's tedious. Yeah. It's not. It's a relatively simple process yeah. once you understand it. You're basically derailing edge loops. So instead of the faces going around in a normal thing. What you do is you kind of delete some of the vertical faces in between, and then you just relink them kind of up a track, okay. um, and then you can kind of push edges in and out, and you get some. But it's a lot of doing that to get it to feel natural, because it's 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 adding randomness. You want to add randomness, but humans are kind of programmed for patterns, and and I missed the reset again. Um, humans are, are programmed for patterns, and you fall into that kind of cycle very easily. So. Yeah. You know, intentionally being random is a is kind of a tricky thing. So, um, 
Yeah, it's. I might even have. I might have that, actually. All right. So once you have, let's say you're happy with this fabric shape, I'm just not, not going to let it. It's, it's going to take another thousand frames for it to really resolve itself. Um, once you have that, then you can just duplicate the mesh and kind of move it over. And that duplicated mesh is going to retain that shape. Okay, so you can you can take your simulation and <clears throat> you can keep it if you want to kind of still have that as a backup. Once you're done with it, you can just delete it, move it onto its own um, layer, whatever you want to do. But now you have this simulated mesh. I'm going to also modify center pivot. Uh, you have a simulated mesh, and then you can hit three on the number pad to smooth it out. And we'll give it that kind of blue material. All right, and now you got these really nice natural folds. That hand modeling would be just an enormous pain. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the other pretty common, easy use case for cloth.